Hey guys, it's Anna, and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be filming a huge perfume haul. I think this is the biggest one I have to date. I'm a little bit overwhelmed to begin this video because I'm like, this is a lot. So grab a snack join me and um, I'm gonna show you what I got and do some reviews. I'm gonna begin with the lovely PR that I received from some beautiful companies. I am beyond grateful to all the companies that work with me and send me product. It is an absolute dream. I'm so thankful and I love these perfumes so much. I would honestly pay my own money for them. I mean, the majority of my collection, I do pay for myself. So these perfumes have been on my wish list. The first one being Commodity Book. And I now have every single commodity fragrance love of mine. I have now tried every single commodity fragrance that the brand carries, and I will tell you that my top favorites, Full Bottle Worthy, are Book, Milk, and Gold, all in the expressive version. You guys might know Commodity has different scent spaces. They have personal, expressive, bold, and not everybody realizes this, but the scents do differ. It's not that you're just choosing a scent that is closer to the skin or you know, louder, more projecting. I just wanted to throw that out there because you guys will see me recommending, you know, my top three and then people will be like, oh, I wanna try that in the bold version because I want it to be louder. Go for it. Get that bold discovery set to see for yourself if you find any loves, but I just wanna say they don't smell the same. Let's talk about the scent. Commodity Book. This is a stunning unisex fragrance. Like seriously, completely androgynous. Anyone and everyone can wear this. It smells so fresh and natural. And this does not straight up smell like a book. But I get the vibe. I get the inspiration. For me, what I picture is like you are reading an old hardcover book on a mountainside and you are completely alone. It is quiet except for the sounds of nature. I positively adore the eucalyptus note that is in this perfume. It gives it that unique touch that differentiates it from all the other sandalwoods that kind of get grouped in to this kind of perfume family. It gives it a little bit of this kind of cold feeling. So it's very refreshing in that way. The eucalyptus and the cypress note really jump out at me, give me that fresh greenness, and then you get a blast of sandalwood, cedar, and rosewood. You get a clean, fresh musk, and then there's this little underlying subtle sweetness in the perfume that comes from, I'm assuming, the resinous qualities in here, the amorous, the amber. Absolutely beautiful. My boyfriend really enjoys this too. As soon as I got it, he's been using it. It's very zen, peaceful, calming, grounding, etc. I'm just thrilled with my little commodity collection. It is now complete. I'm very happy. And if you want to try a discovery set from commodity or purchase a fragrance even, I do have a discount code on a 10 for 10% off the whole commodity website. I always really appreciate when you guys use my discount codes. It just blows me away to see the support I get. I'm so thankful. The next two are from my people over at Twisted Lily. Adore them. And that same discount code works on their website. They are a huge niche fragrance retailer. So getting niche fragrances with a special offer is just incredible. I love shopping there. And they have spray samples that are affordable. In my last, I think it was my last haul, they gifted me BDK's Grisha Arnel. And I freaking love that perfume. Yeah, it's a bit of me, you know? A spicy sandalwood fragrance. And as you might know, they came out with their x straight version. I ordered a sample of the x straight and I was like, okay, okay, this is good. At first when I tried the x straight I was like, okay, I will definitely be getting a bottle once I run out of the original. But the more I wore the x straight I was like, I don't know. 
I don't know about that. And the more I wore it, the more I fell in love with it. And I just adore this scent profile that it will absolutely be getting used. So many people online, like literally practically everyone, says that the x straight is the more masculine take on Gris Charnel. In my opinion, as a unisex fragrance lover, I think this is perfectly down the middle unisex, personally. Does it have a little bit more of that masculine edge in comparison to the original? Yes, but I still personally find it unisex. How this is different, the opening is quite similar. You're, like This is absolutely Gris Charnel. They did an amazing job with this flanker, you could say, because this really holds true to the Gris Charnel DNA, but it just has a little extra added twist spin. This is more woody, it's more spicy. So that character in the fragrance has been amplified. It has an added cedar note, which adds to that overall more woody quality. And this is just downright sexy. I sprayed this on Eric and I was like, well, that's just downright sexual. Oh, it, it is hot. It is hot. If I smelled this on someone, I would literally die. Like, holy shit, you have good taste. And where I find this really differentiates itself is in the dry down. In the dry down, we have an added vanilla note and that becomes more apparent the longer you wear it and that just shines on your skin as the hours go by. It also has an added patchouli note, which gives it this extra bit of this like edgy earthiness, but it's not like a loud in your face, dirty patchouli at all. It's more present for sure than Gris Charnel, even though Gris Charnel has amazing lasting power on me. I mean, th mm, yeah, this is, this is definitely stronger. You do not need a lot with this one at all. The fig is toned down a little bit in here. You're still definitely getting it. You're getting that, you know, figgy milkiness, but it is quieter than in the original. So that's that for my little comparison. Just down to the scent, this is a woody, spicy fragrance with this aromatic black tea note. It's a dry woody scent, it also has vetiver in here, and then it has a powdery quality to it from the iris. A lot of people, when they talk about Gris Charnel, they describe it to be a rainy day perfume, and in a way, I get that because, you know, you have the gray juice, it's like this, you know, kind of darker perfume, so it's moody in a sense, but I don't personally find it cozy. At least for me personally, like when it's a rainy day and I wanna feel cozy, like I would more so reach for something like commodity milk that's like warm and yummy and just scrumptious. Gris Charnel to me is someone that is very chic and well-dressed, put together, I'm just good looking <laughs> too, frankly. They have class, style, intelligence, wit, all of it. And they exclusively wear neutral colors. It's the vibe I'm getting. Okay, next one. I'm dead. Maison Crivelli's Hibiscus Mahajad. This is my scent of the day today, and let me tell you, I smell freaking incredible. This is one of the most powerful perfumes I have in my collection that I've ever smelled. Honey, you do not need a lot. This is expensive but this is going to last you forever. And honey, does it smell expensive? Another freaking masterpiece by Quentin Biche. The hibiscus needs to be used <laughs> more in perfume because this note is delectable. It is freaking mouthwatering. This is a blast of obviously hibiscus and it's a very realistic, gorgeous, hibiscus note. I drink hibiscus tea religiously, so I can say that they've nailed it. And this has a delightful pink rose. This is not your mature traditional rose. This is a rose that I think so many people are going to fall in love with. This is a feminine perfume and it has a vanilla note that is absolutely delectable. The perfect amount of vanilla as well. It's not 
too sweet, but it's definitely present. As a very unique underlying supporting base, we have mint and leather, and this is not an animalic leather or anything like that. It's very smooth, but it adds this intriguing, sexy, dark undertone a little bit, like a really hot girl with the secret. <laughs> and then the mint is not too loud, but it's there to give a little bit of a cooling, edgy feel. If you like show-stopping, sexy, sweetened floral, feminine perfumes that have a little fruity element, because I find that the hibiscus definitely does that, you have to try this. Next up, we have Michael Malol's 593 Bali. And you guys might remember that in my last haul video, a portion of the video was sponsored by Michael Malol. They sent me their Bliss Discovery set and their candy perfume. Their candy perfume was not for me. This was the one I found full bottle worthy in the discovery set that I tested out. And when they saw my review, they offered to send me this one. Do you see the dent we've already put in this? My boyfriend and I have been really putting it to use. He wears this almost on a daily. He reaches for this very often when he goes to the gym. This is in the same kind of vein family as Commodities Book, your perfectly unisex, fresh, woody, aromatic fragrance. There is something about sandalwood. That is my, that's my number one favorite note. I cannot get enough of sandalwood. I see sandalwood and I'm hooked. This is sandalwood with a beautiful LME note, which provides this balmy, resinous, lightly natural, sweet quality to the perfume. It has a powdery quality from the Oris, and this is a creamy sandalwood. It has a fresh musk. There's a suede, which gives it this bohemian feel. And then cardamom, another one of my favorite notes. I just adore that as a fresh, spicy touch. And although this is a lighter, more airy, woody scent, I could get this to last around six hours on me with, of course, moisturizing and overspraying. Really underrated. This is a good one. Next up, this is so freaking sweet. I had a subscriber watch my wish list video from a while back and one of the perfumes I talked about was Imaginary Authors A Whiff of a Waffle Cone. And she messaged me and offered to send me her bottle because it wasn't quite her cup of tea. <sighs> I died. So I want to say a huge thank you to Ketline. Ketlin, I'm so sorry if I'm saying it wrong. I know how it feels when someone mispronounces your name, but thank you so much. You're so sweet. I am overjoyed to have a whiff of a waffle cone because let me tell you, it is literally a whiff of a waffle cone. But more specifically, and I said this in that video, this is Strope Waffles in a perfume with added ice cream. And so it just makes my little Dutch heart happy. Strobe waffles are a Dutch cookie that are essentially chewy waffle cone with a very light caramel inside. And a whiff of a waffle cone is the smell of walking in an ice cream shop. You're getting vanilla ice cream that's loaded with chunks of strobe waffles, and then it's obviously on a waffle cone, and a little bit of cinnamon mixed in. This is gourmand heaven. Uh, this just sends me. I would love to have more ice cream perfumes. If you have bomb ice cream perfume recommendations, please let me know because I want to try more. So yeah, it's a really fun experience because it's like you're getting that specialty ice creams. That's my favorite when ice cream shops go all out with their flavors. Like it's not just chocolate, vanilla, strawberry. Like you're giving me creativity. I'm all about that. But it's not just that because in the dry down, you get the smell of like toasted wood 
that becomes quite apparent in the dry down. And that part of the fragrance isn't for everyone, I've heard. So definitely sample it, don't be blind buying it, but I personally love it because I'm all about a wood note and you know, I'm all good with that like warm toasty vibe. Now we are transitioning to all the perfumes I bought. This one is also from Imaginary Authors and I hinted that um, in my declutter video that I found a fragrance that is very similar to Mikalev's Gayak but that I actually prefer and I love it. And this is Memoirs of a Trespasser. The first time I smelled this, I was like, oh, this is good. And it smells very familiar. 30 seconds later, it hit me. This smells like Gayak. And then when I came to that realization, I was like, wait, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. It was like all coming back to me. I thought I remembered a subscriber telling me like months ago when I was reviewing Gayak that if I liked Gayak, I might like this perfume. So I looked back and saw Julia's comment from the Scent Studio blog on Instagram. And she said, I've never smelled Gayak, but based on the description, you might like Memoirs of a Trespasser by Imaginary Authors. I love it. This girl was spot on. I was so surprised that she just nailed that just based off of a description. She's actually raved a lot about this perfume on her page. I highly recommend you check her out. I really enjoyed Mikalev's Gayak, but it never became a love for me because it was very prominent on clove and it's a very smoky fragrance. This does not have clove and it does have a smokiness, but it's much more demure, toned down. This is what I wanted Gayak to be. This just brought it to the next level. This is a woody vanilla fragrance centered around the notes of Gayak and oak. And the wood does have a little bit of a burning smell to it, but it is much softer, like I said, in comparison to Gayak. It's warm and resinous from the myrrh and benzoin, and it has this hint of a hardened clay vibe. I envision Roman pottery. I don't know, it's just the vibe it gives me. And the name is perfect. This is the smell of an adventurer that's been around. They've traveled through many bookstores, they appreciate art, old buildings. It's in a way like a romance that transports you to a different era. Perfect for fall and winter, sitting by a fire. Oh, also this layered with a whiff of a waffle cone would be incredible or literally any other vanilla. It doesn't need it, but if you wanted to amp up that quality, be amazing. Underrated. You know what? I actually have a good amount of underrated gems in here. You guys need to check these out. Next up, we have a fragrance from Ex Nihilo. And this is not going to be what you expect, okay? Because I've talked about Fleur Narcotique in several videos. I love that. Still on my wish list. And I am loving using my summer perfumes right now. But I cannot wait for freaking fall to get here so I can wear Brompton Immortals. I am dead, deceased. <laughs> I was so tempted to blind buy this for so long, I'd talk myself out of it. The notes just looked fantastic and I don't hear a lot of people talking about this because this is a Harrods exclusive perfume. So, you know, it's not super accessible, unfortunately. But the people that do talk about this hype this up like, like something else. I was able to find a sample of this on eBay. I had the search saved like everywhere across so many different selling platforms for months and it finally popped up, got a sample. And this perfume is like magic in a bottle to me. The very brief opening is not my favorite because it's a little sharp and there's a lot of pink pepper, but legitimately two minutes later, this turns into the most gorgeous, addicting, airy, sweet, saffron vanilla floral. And this has a lot of saffron in here, which one of my favorite notes 
ever. Like, I'm sorry, but the airy, whimsical sweetness that saffron provides is unmatched. It's so exotic and special to me. And you still get that soft spiciness throughout the fragrance, but it's massively toned down from the opening. Out of the florals, I get rose and ylang ylang the most. I put this on after I got out of the shower. I'm in the middle of doing my skincare routine, and I am just hit across the face with the most amazing saffron vanilla floral. It's so mouthwatering. The sweetness in here acts like the sweetness that's in BR540, but it's not that exact same where it pulls cotton candy. So it's sweet and airy in that way, but it doesn't smell like cotton candy at all. This smells more exotic to me. I'm dying at this point. The longer it sits on my skin, I feel like I'm having heart palpitations. This is feminine sexuality in a bottle. Very attractive is an understatement. This is like a magnet. I wore this and obviously I have a lot of perfumes. I wear perfume every single day and I always smell good. But when you're always smelling good, it takes something in particular to really then jump out. And my boyfriend asked me, he's like, what are you wearing? Absolutely show-stopping. So for any of you who have a Harrods nearby, check this out. Since we're on the topic of sensual <laughs> um, and saffron, Rosendo Matu's number freaking five floral amber sensual musk another beauteous saffron bomb they want to be cheeky and just list spices but my nose and i know better saffron my friends this is the perfume that will have people going what are you wearing what is that smell this is an extremely elevated skin scent to me not skin scent in the way it performs because this is a beast but a you your skin but better kind of scent oh so much better on my word it has this very enticing alluring sensual musk as it says an addictive draws you in kind of sweetness the amber that's in here is translucent very agreeable in my opinion this is not a heavy dark resinous amber whatsoever there's vanilla but it's a very dainty kind of powdery vanilla it's not syrupy or gourmand or really sugary and then you get these very pretty soft feminine floral notes i have no idea what the florals would be it's just perfectly blended. It's so smooth. It smells whimsical, like pixie dust could smell like this, but sexy pixie dust. This smells like money, for sure. And you know what? On second thought, I feel like this would be really enticing on a man. Like my go-to thought is to describe this as feminine, but it's sensual and exotic that I think it would be really enticing and intriguing to smell this on a man. I need Eric to lend me his arm see how it goes because it's the kind of note profile where I feel like it's just going to meld amazingly to the person that wears it this would be an impeccable signature scent like it would really give you that it factor okay this next one I am over the moon to share with you okay I feel yeah I'm over the moon like about all of these what can I say I love perfume and obviously all of my loves I'm passionate about but this hits different. Lise Bow. Can we take a moment for the bottle? This elegant simplicity makes my heart so happy. I'm going to read you the description of this perfume that made me die, okay? Notes of redwood pine, cedar, incense, tobacco, and vanilla. Mic drop. All favorite notes. Okay. Inspired by the secluded forests of the California coast. And I'm in California. I'm a California girl. My whole family's Dutch, but I was born and raised in California. I digress. This is everything to me. This makes my little Anna heart happy. When I sample this perfume, 
had my boyfriend smell it and he's like, what is that? That's incredible. Whenever he smells tobacco and woody notes, that man is hooked. And, um, and you know, I agree. I agree. And multiple times throughout the day, he would then comment like, okay, well that perfume is, that perfume is really good. He was so in love with it. I gave him the rest of my sample and he cherished that like treasure. He told me that this was one of the best fragrances he has smelled in a very, very, very long time and that this is top tier for him. This is in his top three. This is different from the fragrances that he usually gravitates towards because this has a very soft, dainty, powdery, cozy like vibe to it. So we're in a bit of a love triangle with this one here. Um, it has been getting so much use, but you really can't see much of a dent because this is a strong performer. He sprayed this upstairs. I was all the way downstairs. He only did a couple sprays. You do not need much. And literally from downstairs, I was like, Bo? And he was like, seriously? All the way from down there? I love the notes that are in here because they just absolutely transport me. I mainly get cedar, sequoia, and vanilla. The woody notes in here are creamy, comforting. It's like getting a freaking hug from Mother Nature. And the vanilla is a powdery, soft, dainty cloud of vanilla. The incense isn't smoky at all. It's like that intriguing, exotic, lightly sweet incense. I pick up the Elemi resin and a little bit of a dry tobacco. It's just beyond gorgeous. It's a bit of me, a lot of me. <laughs> so be prepared to see this in many future videos because I will have this forever. Another impeccable unisex fragrance for size TSN Du. Give me all the juniper. If you have amazing juniper fragrance recommendations, please let me know down below because I cannot get enough of the note. This perfume is so yummy to me because you have the aromatic note of juniper. We got, oh, I just, freaking stab myself. Be careful. <laughs> this cap is sharp. This is just a treat to smell, to bless the nose. Warm spiciness from nutmeg, brown sugar to give it this addicting sweetness that's never too much. I had to spray it on, so good. A leather that's not animalic whatsoever, just gives it a little bit of edge. You get that bitter orange just in the opening, a little citrus kick and the rum, ugh. Just brings me in, it brings me in. Warm, cocooning, fall, winter in a bottle. I've never smelled anything like this. It's comfort to me, like being wrapped in a super fluffy, warm blanket. It has just a touch of a gourmand quality to it to me. Like I almost pick up a hint of a cinnamony brown sugar bread. There's a little bit of that vibe in there to make it even more warm and enticing and yummy. I'm gonna set the scene for you. Picture being at a luxurious rustic lounge during the holidays. We have juniper trees outside. We have some leather seating. People are drinking rum. And then you have that some sort of yummy holiday, cinnamony, nutmeg, brown sugar, bread deliciousness being baked in the next room over. It's a vibe because on the one hand, it's super cozy and comforting and just like come here, this is like a cuddle, this is a warm blanket. And then on the other hand, it's very luxurious, refined, has little elements of that kind of dark quality. Oh, freaking love it. Next one, I am 
frightfully afraid to see how long this video is going to be. Here I am contributing to more time. Anyway, Byredos Cellier. This is a unisex fragrance. I wear this, but it is definitely leaning on the masculine side. This is quite similar to Le Labo Centol 33, but there are notable differences. Centol 33 is more aromatic, more dry, more harsh, and this has an amplified leather note, and I find this to be warmer and smoother. Oh my gosh. Oh, there goes my cap. And it has a resinous feel in my opinion, even though that's not listed. I get a dominant sandalwood vibe from here. And again, it's not even listed. I fell head over heels with my sample of Cellier. Once I got the bottle, it is more leather dominant than my experience was with the sample. So I'm kind of getting used to that. Some days, I'll be honest, it's a bit too leathery for me and other days it's perfect and not too leathery at all. And I just get this warm sandalwood, smooth leathery experience. That's just like edgy and cool and smells like wood chips in nature or something like that. There is birch in here and cashmere in. We have black tea, we have tobacco leaf. So to me, these notes come together and I get transported to a dry forest. It's just a lot of wood. We're not getting any greenery here. Accompanied by a very attractive, tanned, muscular, rugged man. <laughs> And yes, I wear this perfume too. Okay, I know I'm describing it this way. This is like the picture I'm experiencing, but it's not too masculine for me whatsoever. But most would deem this more masculine, whatever. It's funny because plenty of women wear Le Labo Centol 33, but that's too masculine for me. So like, just to give you like a little bit of reference. So yeah, I think it's pretty damn sexy. Like I said, some days that leather is just like a little bit too much for me and still getting used to it. And then other days I'm like, chef's kiss. I wore this on a night hike the other day and it was perfect, just a little bit. I barely needed anything. It was just radiating off of me. And this just mixed with just being out there in nature was perfect. So yeah, this will be the perfume that I wear when I am in all black and I'm just having a very cool edgy dominant moment. Okay, last two, bear with me. We have two travel sizes. The first one being Maison Margiela's When the Rain Stops. The name had me. I was like, okay, okay. So I sprayed this on my wrist in Sephora, thought it was really pretty, and just got the travel size because I needed more experience with the scent before deciding to get a full bottle. And I don't think I'm gonna end up with the full bottle, but I will enjoy this travel size. If you are someone who is into your clean laundry kind of scents, check this one out. This might be for you. This smells like you've been sitting in a bubble bath for an hour. You're having your self care day. You come out of your bath super clean. Like all of the products that you use are just very soapy and classic, nothing that's particularly scented. And then you wear all white linen. You're going for a very clean, minimalistic look. You have a slicked back low bun and you step outside and it has just stopped raining. So this is not the scent of when the rain stops to a T, but I get, I get the vibe. This is more so to me, clean laundry, soapy, fresh, that kind of stuff. With a fresh air, a watery experience, and then a bit of greenery and florals from outside. So if that sounds like your cup of tea, I would check it out. It smells put together, white, definitely fits within that clean girl aesthetic. So I do enjoy it, but it's not like an absolute love for me because it doesn't resonate with the kind of fragrances that I tend to lean towards but I do enjoy it, I like it. Last one is Skylar's Indigo Valley. The notes in this perfume had me so intrigued. When I saw that they announced this was launching, I was like, oh my gosh. You know what I get from this? You know how Bath & Body Works Into the Night is a very popular perfume and it's a scent within the Bath & Body Works line that's more elevated, more complex, 
for Bath and Body Works. It smells more like a perfume. That's the vibe Indigo Valley gives me. Not that it smells like into the night whatsoever, but I'm just saying I feel like this could be a Bath and Body Works scent that would be wildly popular. And I don't mean that as a bad thing at all. It's very crowd pleasing because it's that approachable, safe, just freaking likable, good smelling perfume. It's not as elevated, I would say, perhaps, as other perfumes, but I feel like this would absolutely be a top rated Bath & Body Works perfume in the best way. It feels just a bit young for me. Not that it smells too young because literally absolutely anyone could wear this, but I just mean for my personal like scent preference. I will say during the entire wear of the fragrance, the opening was the most interesting part. And as it dries down, it simplifies, but still smells good. I mainly get blueberry vanilla lotus, which gives this like aquatic floral, a likable suede that's not loud, and musk. I get a touch of chocolate just in the opening and then I get a transparent kind of wood in the base. It's nothing too loud at all. It's good. I'm actually going to give this to my sister because I think she would really enjoy it. So that brings me finally to the end of my perfume haul. Thank you for sitting down with me, joining me for my not so little chat. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't already. If you wanna see me in any more videos, I'd appreciate it so, so much. I hope you guys are having an amazing day and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.